Everybody. I'm Lauren Underwood, and I represent Illinois' 14th Congressional District, and I'm a co-founder and co-chair of the Black Maternal Health Caucus. I am delighted to welcome everyone to my 2021 Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Annual Legislative Conference event about investing in joyful Black pregnancy and birth and how advancing the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act will save lives. I'd like to begin by thanking the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, NARAL Pro-Choice America, and Faring Pharmaceuticals for sponsoring today's session. Thank you for your support and thank you for your commitment to tackling our nation's Black maternal health crisis. I'd also like to thank the leaders of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and all the staff who put in so much work to pull off another successful virtual conference. And I'm grateful for the community leaders and my colleagues in Congress who are joining me for today's session. Your bold leadership has already made a difference for the patients you care for, the constituents you represent, and all moms across our country. And finally, I would like to thank everyone who's tuning in to today's event, whether you're a pregnant person yourself, a nurse or doctor, a leader of a community-based organization, a policy advocate, or you're just trying to learn more, I am so glad that you're here. And I hope that you'll leave today's session better, better informed, but also inspired to take action to save mom's lives and racial and ethnic maternal health disparities and advance true equity and justice for all. During the course of this event, we will have two panel discussions. The first will tell the stories of what joyful Black pregnancy looks like and how we can achieve it. The second panel, with Black maternal health champions in Congress, will focus on how our Momnibus legislation can scale programs that will ensure that every mom and birthing person not only survives pregnancy, but thrives and experiences the full joys of motherhood. But before those conversations, we are honored to begin with messages from two incredible leaders in the House of Representatives, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Majority Leader Steny Hoyer. Speaker Pelosi is the 52nd Speaker of the House of Representatives, having made history in 2007 when she was elected the first woman to serve as Speaker of the House. On top of her many legislative accomplishments over the more than 30 years that she's represented California's 12th district, Speaker Pelosi has been a strong supporter of Black maternal health legislation, including the powerful message that she delivered earlier this year when she said that we must pass the Momnibus. At this time, it's my honor to introduce this message from the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Hello. As House Speaker, it is my honor to join the CBC's Foundation's annual legislative conference to discuss Black maternal health, an issue of vital importance to families across America. I salute our host, Congresswoman Lauren Underwood, for her persistent leadership, including with the expertise she brings as a nurse and health policy expert, and as the co-founder of the House's Black Maternal Health Caucus. And thank you to Congresswomen Alma Adams, Lucy McBath, and Lisa Blunt Rochester for your leadership on Black maternal health as you participate in today's panel, as well as leader Steny Hoyer for lending his voice to this important discussion. Pregnancy and childbirth are among life's most special blessings. But as you know, our nation is suffering from a maternal mortality crisis that is disproportionately impacting Black, Latinx, and Indonesian indigenous mothers. This crisis challenges our conscience and demands urgent action. That is why Congress is committed to passing the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act. This historic legislation crafted by women of color to meet the needs of women of color will invest directly in mother's health. And it is an essential piece of Democrats' big, 
Build Back Better agenda and showing that black moms not only survive childbirth, but they also, uh, and they and their families thrive in the long term. Under the leadership of President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats in Congress, we will continue fighting to pass this life-saving legislation, which advances equity and justice while putting women, children, and families first. Thank you for your tireless leadership on behalf of black mothers. Best wishes for a productive Congress conference. Congratulations on your great work. Thank you for your powerful message, Madam Speaker. Next, I would like to introduce Leader Hoyer. As House Majority Leader, Congressman Hoyer is the second ranking member of the House Democratic leadership. He is charged with scheduling legislation for consideration on the House floor, shaping House Democrats' legislative priorities, and delivering the Democratic message. He is also a founding member of the Black Maternal Health Caucus, who is constantly leading efforts in his community in Maryland's 5th District, as well as in the House of Representatives to raise awareness about this issue and advance critical policy solutions. It is my honor to introduce this message from the Majority Leader of the House, Steny Hoyer. Hello, everybody. I am so pleased to join you at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation issues conference, which is always, I think, the best issues conference every year that we have in Washington, D.C. And I'm glad to join you in virtually, uh, although I'd rather be there in person, as I know you would as well. I am very proud to stand with my dear friends, Representative Lauren Underwood and Representative Alma Adams as a founding member of the Congressional Black Maternal Health Caucus for years. I've worked to lessen the disparities for new parents through the creation and expansion of the Judith P. Hoyer Center Early Learning Hubs, or as they're affectionately called, Judy Centers. They are named after my late wife, who was an early childhood educator. These centers bring external resources to the people who need them to close the gap in education and early childhood development in much the same way that the bills that make up the Momnibus work to provide African-American women with the resources they need to have healthier pregnancies and deliveries. Time and again, I've heard from my constituents about the racial health disparities generally and the problems facing African-American new mothers specifically at meetings and roundtables in my district. As Representative Underwood knows well and has been working hard to raise awareness towards a solution, African-American mothers and mothers-to-be experience highly disproportionate rates of complications and deaths from preventable pregnancy-related conditions. That's a tragic reality that we must work together to change. That is why I joined the Black Maternal Health Caucus and have been working to promote the Momnibus package of legislation to address and reduce these disparities. And I was proud to bring to the floor one of the component bills, the Protecting Moms Who Served Act, and have it pass the House in May. With Senate action, we can begin to close the gap for African-American women who have served in our armed forces. That is our responsibility. That was a great start, of course, and we will continue pushing forward together on the remaining solutions proposed in the Momnibus legislation. This is a critical issue nationally for mothers, children, their families, and entire communities. You know, the United Negro College Fund has a phrase which says, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. That is so true. And in America, we don't have a child or a mom to waste. And I want to thank Representative Underwood for championing this cause in Congress. I look forward to continuing to work with her and with the rest of the Congressional Black Caucus and Alma Adams to get it done. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Alma. Thank you all. I am so grateful to Speaker Pelosi and Leader Hoyer for joining us today. Their messages about the importance of taking bold action to support Black moms and birthing people is a perfect introduction to our first panel discussion about joyful Black pregnancy. We know the depth of the crisis by now. We've heard the statistics, you've read the stories, and some of us have even experienced losses or near misses. 
Too often, these conversations miss an important truth that accompanies this crisis. For all that is going wrong, there's so much going right. So many reasons to be hopeful, so many Black women and community leaders who are demonstrating what's possible when we listen to, respect, and center Black pe pregnant people and their families. Our first panel is evidence of how joyful Black pregnancy can be when we are serious about providing culturally congruent care and robust social support to moms during and after their pregnancies. I'm joined today by three distinguished panelists. First, we have Carrie Stewart, the Director of Midwifery Services at U Chicago Medicine. Carrie is a certified nurse midwife who specializes in pregnancy, labor and childbirth, and postpartum infant and well woman care. Thank you for being here, Carrie. We are also joined by Dr. Twyla Dillian, the Executive Director of Health Connect One a Chicago-based organization that serves as a national leader for advancing equitable, community-based, peer-to-peer support for pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, and early parenting. Welcome, Twyla. And last but not least, we are joined by Marquela Goins from South Carolina, a mother of three and the CEO of Quay's Majestic Hands Hair Salon. Welcome, Marquela, and let's get this conversation started. And I want to begin with Carrie. Last fall, a study found that when Black newborns are cared for by Black physicians, the mortality penalty they suffer as compared with white infants is halved. This research added to a large body of evidence about the value of culturally concordant care. Carrie, based on your experience as a Black certified nurse midwife, what impact does it make for Black pregnant people to be able to go through pregnancy, labor, and delivery, and the postpartum period with a midwife that looks like they do with respect to both clinical outcomes and patient experience? Thank you for having me. You know, this is a very important topic um, and the basis of a lot of research that I'm starting to do um, on the South side of Chicago. Um, it's very impactful. And as you, you know, um, reference the article and the research that's been done, um, patients are seeking providers that look like them. And what happens when they do that, it's because um, one, they're much more comfortable speaking to someone that looks like them. They have a connection. There's a cultural connection. But not only that, um, it increases the patient provider relationship allowing for much more communication in the patient, allowing um, the, the patient having a better experience, how they want to birth, um, how they see things going with their pregnancy, um, being much more receptive to the recommendations that we as providers make. But more importantly, it increases their trust, not only in their provider, but definitely in the healthcare system. Um, and unfortunately, we have patients that are not trustful you know, for several reasons, um, but we want to definitely increase that. And having providers that look like patients will definitely change that. Thank you. I'd like to turn to Twyla next. We know that the clinical care that people receive during and after pregnancy is important, but so is the support that they have surrounding them and the access that they have to quality housing to live in, nutritious foods to eat, clean air to breathe, and other social determinants of health. Twyla, as the Executive Director of Health Connect One, can you describe the mission of your organization and the value of culturally congruent peer-to-peer -peer support throughout the perinatal period? Thank you for the warm introduction, Representative Underwood. I'm happy to be here. At Health Connect One, we collaborate with Black, Brown, and Indigenous communities across the nation to ensure birth equity for families from these historically marginalized communities through perinatal workforce program development and consultation. Together with communities, we develop customized programs, training, and provide ongoing technical assistance to community-based doulas, community health workers, and breastfeeding peer counselors. Culturally reflective peer-to-peer -peer support, knowledge, and guidance, the core of Health Connect One programs have the power to transform health outcomes for mothers, birthing people, and families who are often dismissed upon arrival within healthcare settings. Culturally congruent care can mitigate potential harm, help pregnant people know and advocate for their rights, and push back against devaluing experiences, holding medical providers accountable. It ensures that individual needs and experiences drive perinatal-related care. 
we are driven by our passion to ensure every birthing person's voice is heard and prioritized. Thank you so much, Twyla. Uh, finally, I'd like to turn to Marquela. Uh, Marquela, what was it like to be supported by a Black doula during your pregnancy, giving birth, and in the postpartum period? Firstly, I would like to speak to the fact that I didn't know what a doula was until I received the services. I had an impeccable experience with Amber. Amber told me what a community doula was. I was a little on edge because she mentioned that she would have to do weekly home visits. I signed up for the program and it was everything I didn't know I needed. I received education on pregnancy, labor, birthing, as well as the postpartum period. Amber also educated me on breastfeeding and extra heavy on the breastfeeding. Amber also provided me with resources I knew nothing about, such as therapy. There was a this was a major highlight of the program because I paid nothing out of pocket. I suffered from PPD, postpartum depression, and eventually overcame it with the help of my therapist, Dominique, who Amber provided, well, Birth Matters provided for me at no cost. Oh yeah, she was an African-American woman like me. So it was easy for me to confide in her and trust. The relationship I developed with these amazing ladies is unique. And now I can help my family and the community. I am forever grateful for both Birth Matters, Amber, and Dominique. Thank you. Carrie, recognizing how important it is for pregnant people to have a choice in their maternity care providers, no matter where they live, what can we do to grow the workforce of Black midwives? There's lots of work that we can do. Um, and we want to start with supporting organizations and individuals that um, look like us, but are in the healthcare field. Um, organizations like the one I have, Melanated Midwives um, is an organization that highlights and supports uh, midwife students of color who desire to continue their education um, and support them as they become providers. Um, physicians, nurses, we want to continue to support those providers because they will care for the patients in the community. Um, it's not just, you know, social, emotional support, but we financially want to support their education and their endeavors as they continue on. That will definitely make a difference. And Twyla, what's something that we can do, whether it's at the local, state, or federal level, to better support Black doulas and peer supporters? What impact would it make if everyone could go through pregnancy, childbirth, and the postpartum period with a doula or other peer supporter that they could trust? So the evidence is really clear that doulas and perinatal support workers improve health outcomes. Sustaining their employment through fair, equitable pay is crucial to advance birth equity. This involves engaging community leaders and organizations to promote a team approach and co-designing nationwide programs that will advance fiscal sustainability of community-based doula and breastfeeding peer counselor programs nationwide. Having a community-based doula or perinatal support worker who looks like the families, we've said this over and over, is, is critical to increase adherence to birth preferences, make birth and postpartum more enjoyable and comfortable, reduce the likelihood of epidural and C-section and increase breastfeeding initiation. And most important, increase birthing people and their infants' chance of survival. Marquela, as you think about your own childbirth experience and the experiences of loved ones, what do you think are the most important things that we can do to support Black parents during and after their pregnancies? The most important thing for me was support. I had recently had two vaginals, but going into my third pregnancy, I ended up having to have a C-section. I never had. And so having a doula was the key point to my birthing experience. I know me having a doula pushed me to get back on my feet and be a great mom to my three children. I enrolled in cosmetology school graduated and opened my own hair salon, Quay's Majestic Hands, here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So I'm grateful for that. Congratulations. Now, as we near the end of this panel discussion, I want to return to the theme of our conversation, 
joyful Black pregnancy. And I want to know what makes each of you hopeful for the future? What can we do to make sure that pregnancy and childbirth is truly a joyful experience for Black moms and all moms across the country? Carrie, I'll start with you, then Twyla, then Marquayla. You know, it's just very simple. We need to listen to our birthing um, families and patients um, and just hear them out. They have wishes, they have desires, and we need to understand that. Um, they know their voice, they know their desires. And so we want to support that and encourage um, all the things that they desire. And if we can help lead them and educate them in any way, we want to do that. The stories of Black pregnancy and birth joy make me very hopeful especially when paired with increased focus on ensuring that we have access to what we need to ensure more black pregnancy and birth joy. A concerted effort is necessary to remove the obstacles to that joy. And I believe that we are collectively working toward that. And Health Connect One is proud to partner with community-based workers, advocacy partners, and legislators to keep that momentum going. Making sure that every Black mom, all moms across the country have knowledge about Earth Matters programs. Since I personally went through the program, this is a personal experience. And I can say that with no doubt that Birth Matters is essential to any mother. Thanks. Thank you, Marquela. And thank you to Carrie, Twyla, and Marquela for joining this conversation and for sharing the joy of Black motherhood with each of us. I'm hopeful for the future because of people like Carrie, Twyla, and Marquela. And I'm also hopeful because I am surrounded by colleagues in Congress who have joined me in this effort to save lives and ensure that motherhood is truly joyful for every Black woman and birthing person in this country. And the best way to do that is by advancing comprehensive policies to scale the types of initiatives that Carrie, Twyla, and Marquela were talking about growing and diversifying the perinatal workforce, addressing social determinants of health, and investing in community-based organizations. The members of Congress who are with us now are working tirelessly to get these policies enacted through our legislation, the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act of 2021. The Momnibus includes 12 bills to address every driver of maternal mortality, morbidity, and disparities, and to ensure that people feel fully supported and respected throughout the perinatal period. I'm pleased to introduce the champions of the Momnibus at this time who will be joining me for our second and final panel discussion. First, we have my dear friend and co-chair of the Black Maternal Health Caucus, Representative Alma Adams from North Carolina's 12th District. When Representative Adams and I co-founded the caucus in April 2019, we couldn't imagine how far we have come in the last two years, but we're not stopping now. We've got so much more ahead of us and I couldn't ask for a better partner in this mission. I am honored that we are also joined by Representative Lucy McBath from Georgia's 5th Congressional District. Representative McBath brings her own story of pregnancy challenges to this work, and she is the lead sponsor of a critical provision of the Momnibus, the Social Determinants for Moms Act. And finally, I am delighted that Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester from Delaware is here. Representative Blunt Rochester leads the Bipartisan Moms Matter Act in the Momnibus and has been a true maternal health and health equity champion on the Energy and Commerce Committee. Thank you all for being here and for being such amazing partners on this urgent issue. I want to get the conversation started with a question for everyone. I want to know what's motivated you to become a leader in Congress on the issue of Black maternal health. Representative Adams, I'll start with you, then turn it over to Representative McBath, and then Representative Blunt Rochester. Representative Adams, starting with you, what was your motivation to co-found the Black Paternal Health Caucus? Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Congresswoman Underwood. You know, for decades, the uh, maternal, the U.S. maternal mortality and morbidity rates have gotten worse for all mothers, uh, but especially for Black mothers whose health outcomes are further compounded by systemic and, and structural racism. And so it's the community-based organizations uh, 
uh, particularly uh, Black women-led organizations who've been working tirelessly. So uh, I, I can tell you, for me, the issue was personal. My focus on Black maternal health began when my daughter, Janelle, survived a complicated pregnancy that almost claimed her life. A physician overlooked her complaints of pain, and they didn't listen to her, her needs as a Black woman. So the dismissal of her pain uh, almost cost uh, my daughter her life. And since the launch of the Black Maternal Health Caucus, I've talked about how these terrible inequities uh, in our health systems have stolen countless moms from their children. So uh, this is why, and my daughter is not only the mommy to my two amazing grandchildren, she's the principal to all the students at Reedy, Reedy Fork Elementary School. So when I got to Congress, I saw this great opportunity to begin raising awareness about this issue, starting with the first Black Maternal Health Week resolution with then Senator uh, Kamala Harris, uh, and then in 2019, launching the Black Maternal Health Caucus with you. So that is my story. Thank you so much. Representative McBath, what inspired you to become a Black Maternal Health Champion? Thank you so much, Representative Underwood, for this um, really great question. And thank you so much for gathering us for this really important conversation. And, you know, we've seen during this pandemic, probably more than ever that, you know, every American deserves truly to have access to quality, affordable health care, particularly our black mothers. And we need to make critical investments in services and research. And my bill, the Social Determinants for Moms Act does exactly that. And the Social Determinants for Moms Act really does work to take steps to address inequities uh, in areas that we have seen um, that are de uh, determined determinants um, for Black mothers and health outcomes. Um, but, you know, my, my motivation, like many women in America, of course, I struggled to get pregnant. I had many, many struggles to get pregnant. But when I did, I was fortunate to have access to good insurance and, you know, supportive employer and a family to really help me through uh, really difficult times. Um, having Jordan for me was just a miracle for me and my family. But too many mothers in this country, um, you know, the miracle of pregnancy really ends in tragedy for them. And I also understand the grief of losing a loved one. You know, when I lost my son, that the child that I struggled so desperately to get here, bring into this this world. Um, when I lost my son and he was killed in the senseless murder, I was just so completely overwhelmed with, with rage and with grief and sadness. And I, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it to the other side. I didn't know if I was, if I was going to be able to get up out of bed every day, but I made the decision not to let those feelings destroy me. And then I decided that I was going to fight to make sure that the same thing that happened to me doesn't ever happen to anyone's child and that I would work as hard as I could to make sure in Congress that I would do everything in my power to ensure that no other mother ever, ever lost her child or had the same kinds of struggles with pregnancy that I did. Thank you so much for all of your work. And Representative Blunt Rochester, what motivated you to take on these issues? Well, first of all, um, let me thank my colleagues for your leadership and being such champions. Uh, Alma and Lauren, um, you have steered all of us in a bipartisan way. You made this an issue that's not even Democrat and Republican. It's just an issue that we have to deal with as a country. And so glad to be with you on the panel. Also with Lucy McBath, who is also a champion, not only for this issue, but also for gun violence in our country. And we were just on an, uh, on an event as well. And to the first panel, phenomenal, phenomenal. So thank you. I think it really fits the theme of joy that um, we're not just bringing the pain, but we're also sharing some joy. And your question about what motivated me, um, I kind of see it as past, present, and future. Um, years ago, I was Deputy Secretary of Health and Social Services in my state, and I kept hearing the, the numbers and the statistics, and I, I could not believe it. I mean, it didn't matter what your income was. It didn't matter what, what your education level was. As Black women, we were still two, three, four times more likely to have challenges from maternal mortality. And so there's that kind of the history of it. In addition to the personal side, um, I being a mom 
and being fortunate to have my children, one in a birthing center in Delaware. She was born by a midwife. Um, and my son was actually born in France. And so I got to experience a, a, the same thing in a birthing center. And so it was kind of a personal passion, but it wasn't until my sisters had their children, one of whom almost died on the, on the table. Um, that was another past motivation for me. Then there's the present situation of how we're doing as a country. I'm on the Energy and Commerce Committee, so we've had people come before us and testify about all kinds of things, including when they speak up. You know, we had one gentleman say he was thought of, he was afraid to speak up because he didn't want to be seen as the angry black man. And then at the same time, if you don't speak up, you don't get the help or support that you need. And so there's the present situation of the data and the demographics and how we are doing as a country, which is way behind comparable countries. And then there's the future. Um, my, um, my son and my daughter-in-law are trying to have a baby. Um, she has been on social media and everywhere. She's talked about having endometriosis. She's talked about the challenges. They're going through that process now. And I hope that they will be able to deliver a healthy baby and bring joy, just like we want to see that for every mom, every family across our country. So thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Alma, for your leadership. And thank you to the panelists for sharing. I'm just glad to be on the battlefield to get this done. Thank you, Congresswoman Blount Rochester. You know, what's really striking about the three of you and your stories is how personal this work is to you. I, I felt that same passion from our first panelists that everybody brings their full selves to this work. And so Congresswoman Blount Rochester, I wanna come back to you to talk more about the Moms Matter Act. Can you describe what your Momnibus bill would do and why it's so important that we get this legislation passed and signed into law? Yes, thank you so much for bringing that up. I, again, I think it really focuses on the joyful part of Black pregnancy and birth. I was proud to, um, with my colleagues, John Katko from New York, a Republican, as well as on the Senate side, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand um, introduced the Moms Matter Act. And it does two things. This bill really does two things. It makes real investments in community-based programs that provide mental and behavioral health treatments and support to moms with maternal mental health conditions or substance use disorder. And then the second thing that it does is that it provides funding for programs to grow and diversify the maternal, mental, and behavioral health care for workforce. Um, and make sure that there, as was mentioned on the first panel, culturally congruent care, um, make sure that we're really dealing with those issues, whether it's mental health or substance use. Uh, this to me is, uh, you know, it's one of those areas where, again, it's bipartisan. We've got over 47 co-sponsors. We are glad to be part of the Momnibus, um, and we are looking forward to seeing this bus get across the finish line. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, this issue of maternal mental health and substance use is so important. You know, we heard Marquela share her experience, her wonderful experience with the therapist that she was connected to, a counselor. And we want all birthing people to be able to access the resources that they need during this time. So thank you for your leadership, Congresswoman Blunt Rochester. Uh, Representative McBath, you also have a bill in the Momnibus, the Social Determinants for Moms Act. What types of investments would your bill make and why are they so important, especially right now. Well, thank you so much. And I kind of briefly touched upon it just a, a few moments ago, but the Social Determinants for Moms Act, and thank you so much, Lauren, thank you so much for really uh, giving me the ability to really be able to help champion this really important piece of legislation, because it actually, as I said, takes steps to, to address these inequities that, you know, our mothers, our Black mothers and families and babies are experiencing all around the country. Uh, you know, it really addresses the health outcomes, including investing in child care, housing, nutrition, transportation, and environmental justice. You know, for example, the bill is really going to be able to extend WIC eligibility periods for new moms. This is monumental so that women and their children can continue to have access to the nutritious, healthy foods that they need. And it also provides funding for child care access to women when they need to attend uh, prenatal and, and postpartum um, appointments um, for their doctors. So in order to truly be able to solve the Black maternal health crisis, I mean, we need to be intentional in our solutions by addressing the root causes 
and uh, many of what I, which I have just already mentioned, these are the root causes of these disparities and the social determinants does just that. Thank you so much. You know, when we talk about the Momnibus, one of the things that I like to point out to people is that it's comprehensive, right? We're addressing every single dimension of our nation's maternal mortality crisis. And it's really um, thanks to your legislation, Congresswoman McBath, uh, and the nature of really uh, looking at these social determinants of health and putting forward evidence-based solutions, right, to help uh, make sure that moms and birthing people have the resources that they need to have healthy pregnancies, safe labor and deliveries and um, incredible postpartum periods. So thank you for all that you do and for your leadership, particularly with this legislation. Now, Congresswoman Adams, you are the lead sponsor of the Kira Johnson Act and the Momnibus. Now, one of the main components of this bill is funding for community-based organizations, particularly Black women-led organizations. Why is it so important to invest in people doing this work on the ground? Well, I, I, Lauren, I think you, you hit it right. It, those are the folks who are on the ground. Uh, when you think about it, it's a, this is a very special bill uh, for a very special uh, lady, Kira Johnson. But for decades, the uh, U.S. maternal mortality and morbidity rates have gotten worse for all mothers, but mostly for Black mothers whose outcomes in terms of health are complicated by uh, systemic and structural racism. It is the community-based organizations particularly Black women-led organizations who, who've been working to ensure that moms do not lose their lives in an attempt to bring life into the world. It should be a joyful occasion, as we've said. So research continues to highlight community-based organizations as key partners in improving overall health and well-being of communities and individuals in which these organizations serve. So if we're going to end this public health crisis, indeed it is a crisis, it's going to mean empowering our community health partners who've been providing safe and culturally sensitive care to Black moms for years. And we want them to continue to do that. So we need to make those investments. We believe that these community-based organizations are key. You are so right. And I am so glad, uh, Congresswoman Adams, that we were able to hear from our first panel, right, which included a uh, Twyla who runs uh, one such organization, right? And so to hear from a leader of a community-based organization, to understand the nature of the work that they're doing, the expertise that they bring to the space, and then uh, to look at the opportunity that we have to support organizations at scale through the Kira Johnson Act. I am just so grateful for your leadership in our caucus and certainly on this important important piece of legislation. So um, we know that, um, well, those are my reflections on our first panel, but I think that many of you had an opportunity to hopefully learn something um, from Carrie, from Twyla, and from Marquela. And so I just wanted to open it up to our panelists here. What did you hear from these women in our first panel uh, or the women that you serve in your communities uh, that influences the work that you do with the Momnibus? Uh, I'll start with Congresswoman Adams. Well, uh, Lauren, uh, uh, Congresswoman uh, Underwood, let me thank you. You've been a tremendous partner. Uh, I've learned so much, not only from you, but from uh, Congresswoman Blunt Rochester and Congresswoman McBath. Um, and of course, these ladies who were on earlier um, uh, were so impressive. And, and again, with their personal stories and the work that they're continuing to do in the community uh, gives me uh, certainly um, the kind of motivation to continue to do this work because it's it's the young women that we think about, uh, the birthing persons who uh, should have, have a very joyful experience in their lifetime. So um, just hearing from them, uh, uh, listening to not only the work that they're doing, the fact that uh, this young, young woman says she didn't do anything about doulas, uh, doulas but yet uh, she came to this process, learned so much and was able to move uh, her life forward. And so I'm just grateful to have had an opportunity to, uh, to listen to them um, and uh, to learn from them. Uh, and I'll take this, the information uh, forward uh, as we move on to make sure that we get this bill passed. You know, you're so right. It's so interesting that we assume that people know about the range of resources, lactation consultants, doulas, right? These peer support uh, colleagues or counselors. Um, the idea that so many birthing people have not been even presented with the option, much less funding mechanisms and resources to be able to afford that level of care is something that we know that we can improve. 
right? And so that's part of what we're seeking to accomplish with the Momnibus. Uh, Congresswoman McBath or Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, did you want to jump in? I, I just wanted to say, um, I'm so glad you brought that point up because one of the lines that I actually wrote down was when Marquilla said, um, it was everything I didn't know I needed. It was everything I didn't know I needed. And what is so special about this panel, and I hope people really even see the connection between panel one and panel two, is that all of the things that folks who are actually experiencing things, folks that are on the ground, the, the leaders that are coming from our community said, were the, matched up to a lot of our bills, it, which, which really is the powerful thing about the Momnibus, is that it's like, we heard you, your voice matters. And I love this, part about even what you didn't know you needed. We're trying to bring it to the table. I'm so glad I'm on Energy and Commerce, the committee that shepherds some of these bills and I'm on the health subcommittee. And so I'm excited. Uh, Chairwoman Eshu is our, our, our chairwoman of that committee. And so we've been in a lot of conversations on the floor of the house. The vice chair of Energy and Commerce, Robin Kelly is actually another champion for maternal mortality. So that gives me hope, seeing the synergy of what we're doing here to create joyful births and uh, experiences. So thank you both for, for your leadership. And uh, this this is exciting. This is joyful. Thank you. You know, it's so great that we can sit here and we can be listening to these experts from communities, um, that we can take these reflections back to the Congress as we do have partners throughout the House. On the other side of the aisle, we have these partners and over in the Senate. And so I'm optimistic about our possibilities and the potential of uh, getting the mommy bus enacted into law. I want to go to Congresswoman McBath now and see if she had any reflections based on our conversation today. Well, I, I just, you know, I want to piggyback on everything that both Representative Adams and uh, Lisa, Brunt, Lisa Blunt Rochester said. And I, it is so inspiring to me to see these beautiful women on this very first panel that have really stepped in to champion uh, for Black maternal health and for our mamas and babies all across the country. And to see there's so many organizations uh, across the country now that are really beginning to step up and advocate for black mothers and for their children. Uh, I have an organization right here in Georgia, the state that I represent, and it's called Mom, uh, Black Mamas Matter Alliance. And they're headquartered right here in my home state. And they do incredible work on, on the ground in the area of black maternal health. And so just, I think it's just even more importantly, I find just so much hope and, you know, hardworking black mothers all across the country who are striving each and every single day to provide health health and wellness and love to their children and their homes. And I just know that that has to be our charge, each and every one of us, as we continue to work as hard as we can to ensure that, you know, we're protecting our mothers and protecting our children because protecting our families means we're protecting our communities and our future generations. So all of this gives me such great hope and I'm so excited and so grateful to work with you and Representative Adams and Lisa Blunt Rochester and, and you know, Representative Kelly and just thank you so much for the vision to really care for our families and our Black mamas. Thank you. Now, as we come to the end of our panel um, and this event, you know, I want to ask you all a question because you're the experts. You all are moms. And so what makes each of you hopeful for the future of Black motherhood in the United States? Congresswoman Adams, I want to start with you. Well, let me say that I'm, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and of course we've made uh, tremendous progress uh, on the momnibus, and I believe we're going to bring it all the way through. Our Black mamas can't wait. We've got, what, 180 co-sponsors in the House and Senate, uh, more than a 240 endorsement, and so far uh, this Congress, uh, the Protecting Moms Who Serve Act, one of 12 volumes in the momnibus, has passed the House. Uh, so I'm hopeful because I've seen the progress. Uh, at the state level, we can see momnibus bills popping up. We've got one here in North Carolina. It's one in California. And so we're just happy that it's catching on. The Biden-Harris administration has called for a $3 billion investment in maternal health and the American Families Plan. So in a short period of time, uh, we've built a coalition of stakeholders and members who are just elevating solutions uh, to, to this public health crisis. And so let me just say that we have the momentum 
And that gives me hope for the future for Black motherhood. Momentum. Momentum. Yes. That, I love that. that was good, Alma. <laughs> that was great. That's what we'll call it from here on out. A Congresswoman McBath, what gives you hope? Well, you know, I don't know much, what much more I can say after what Representative Adams said, but I just think I'm so excited that we are investing in ourselves, that we are taking advantage to protect ourselves and our futures and our generations as an African-American community. I think that is so vitally important that we do so. And so that's in a, in a nutshell, that's what I'm excited that we're doing. I'm excited for our future. And I'm excited that we understand our value and our worth as black mothers uh, protecting and caring for our children and our communities. Thank you. And Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, I'll give you the last word. What gives you hope? Wow. I could say you. Um, <laughs> um, I, it, it is true to me. I think the fact that there are so many of us now in service that get it, that gives me hope. No offense to anybody who came before, but I know it's been a long time coming for this conversation to be at the level that it is, the intensity that it is, and the seriousness that it is. You know, we, we had uh, another session where one of our Republican colleagues from a Southern state said, please include me in everything that you do. That gives me hope. You know, it's one thing for, for me to be talking about us. It's another thing for him to be, to care about, you know, black birthing people. So, so that also gives me hope. Um, and I think the last thing, again, that I would say is in this moment, um, you know, Representative Adams mentioned the Biden-Harris administration and the fact that everything they're doing is through an equity lens. That means when we talk about health care, we're going to talk about Black maternal health as well and put that as a priority. And so um, the fact that we are prioritizing it from a legislative perspective, from appropriations, and for those of you who don't know what that means, that's the money. The fact that we are putting that front and center, that gives me so much hope and it gives me hope and joy for my grandkids to come. Cause I know they're coming. I already picked out my name. It's going to be Nona, like, you know, like Nona Lisa, they're going to cut out her face, put mine in like, you know, on t-shirts and stuff. So I'm ready. I, that gives me hope. So let's get this work done. Let's get the bus across the line. I love that. Thank you so much, Representative Blunt Rochester. Thank you, Representative Adams. And thank you, Representative McBath for joining me today and for being such fierce champions and amazing partners as we do this work in support of Black moms and families. Representative Barbara Lee also wanted to join us for this panel today, but unfortunately she had a scheduling conflict. However, Representative Lee was able to share some remarks that underscore her long-standing commitment to this issue. I am happy to introduce Representative Barbara Lee for her remarks now. Thank you, Congresswoman Underwood for such a kind introduction. And I just have to thank you for your tremendous leadership as a bold member of the House Appropriations Committee taking on so many issues that need to be addressed. I want to just uh, mention a couple of things and I'm thinking about my mother today uh, because you know, the horror of health disparities for black women is personal to me. When my mother went into labor with me, the hospital refused her admission. She needed a C-section, but she nearly died as a result. By the time the callous people at the hospital agreed to admit her, they were forced to do an emergency forceps delivery. I almost didn't get into this world. I almost didn't get a chance to breathe. My mother almost died. So the segregation, racism, I know what this is, and it should not be this way today. Black women today are still three to four times more likely to die from preventable pregnancy complications than white women. There are a range of factors that contribute to the racial disparities we see in maternal mortality still. Many of them are based in structural racism and inequality embedded in healthcare systems, 
from the quality of care to the access to insurance to the prevalence of culturally competent healthcare providers, Black women continue to be disadvantaged. We have a Black maternal health crisis in this country. It is a state of emergency. As a member of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services and Education, I am dedicated to using my role as an appropriator to address this crisis swiftly and with a firm resolve to turn the tide on the unacceptable disparities in healthcare plaguing the Black community. I'm so glad to stand with my colleagues and demand action to protect our sisters and afford them the care they rightfully deserve. So thank you again, Representative Underwood, for your leadership and convening and mobilizing this urgent and needed effort. And once again, uh, I'm saying this today in memory of my mother and for all Black women who deserve to be treated equally without barriers and with a healthcare system that works also for them because Black lives do matter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Lee, for your remarks and for your incredible partnership on this issue. You know, we've had a wonderful session today. I've been so inspired to hear the stories from our community advocates and experts, our congressional panelists, my partners in Congress and the Black Maternal Health Caucus, obviously our House uh, and leadership who offered their video remarks. And, you know, there's so many stories that were shared. You know why? Because this work is personal for so many of us. I come to this space as a nurse, um, but also as a black woman who lost a dear friend, Dr. Shalon Irving, three weeks after she delivered a beautiful baby girl in 2017. Her daughter, Soleil, uh, is incredible. And I wish that Shalon was here uh, to witness her daughter grow up and thrive. And so I do this work in her memory and in her honor. And I know that so many of you who are viewing today's program have been touched by maternal mortality and severe morbidity. You know, the statistics say that Black birthing people are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than their white counterparts. Um, but for every death, we have 70, seven zero near misses, which means that there's so many of us who could be on this panel sharing their stories. And what I'm going to ask of you is to not just watch the panel today, but to commit to yourself to take action, right? We've heard from Carrie, we've heard from Twyla, we've heard from Marquela, we've heard from Speaker Pelosi and Leader Hoyer, we heard from Congresswoman Adams, we heard from Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, Congresswoman McBath, and Congresswoman Lee. You know, you've heard from these experts sharing their stories. Um, and I'm going to ask you to take action as well. Um, I want to thank our incredible uh, sponsors and partners uh, for this uh, session today, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, NARAL Pro-Choice Pro America, and Faring Pharmaceuticals for their sponsorship. And I want to thank you all so much for viewing our session and our conversation today. I hope you came away with a better understanding of the scope of the Black maternal health crisis in our country and the policies that can save lives and advance equity and the joy of Black motherhood that we can make available to every family in our country if we have the courage to take action. I am more hopeful for the future than ever before, but we can't do it alone. We need your help. So everyone who's watching has a representative and two senators. Please contact your members of Congress and talk with them about this issue and the legislation that they can support to save lives. Our Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act is H.R. 959 in the House and S. 346 in the Senate, and it's co-sponsored by more than 180 members of Congress. Getting additional members of Congress to sign on will build our momentum, or momentum, <laughs> as Congresswoman Adams says, to get these bills passed. But you know this, just like we do, we don't have any time to waste. So I look forward to working with you to get the Momnibus signed into law and celebrating with you when we're back together again in person at the annual legislative conference next year. Thank you again for your support. Thank you for your advocacy. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take good care of yourselves, everybody.